Only a few months ago, we were in Somerset at Kilver Viaduct, where a two-car, two-man challenge was the opening shot in what we knew would become a full-on broadside as the eco-warriors embraced the electric car revolution in the same way that they embraced organic farming. And interestingly, they'd chosen the same champions. Inevitably, organic farmer Roger Saul became involved with the UK's original eco-warrior, Prince Charles, and the Prince's charities have now organised a whole week of shows, parades, parties and concerts in the heart of London, all designed to show that sustainable living is possible, even when you have to drive your car on a daily basis. Well, I had this fond dream that the viaduct was going to transport itself to the mall and become a race dam, but um, that was never quite going to happen after being through the palace. So we've got a parade together, and what's been amazing is I think the huge enthusiasm from car manufacturers, from eco car supporters. Everybody's really worked hard to make this happen. It's been it's been a ball. On a glorious sunny Sunday in September, the Mall is closed to normal traffic and open only to cars which have a sound ecological basis. And that includes entrance from the long-running Shell Eco Marathon. Think about that one. It includes two-wheeled transport as well, including commuter scooters and race bikes. And it includes all kinds of electric cars, starting with a 1904 Krieger owned by the Science Museum in London and still in perfect working order. And it finishes with the newest of them all, the sculptured and seductive Citroen Servolt. And all of them driven by an assortment of well-known faces who either have some kind of driving background, like Perry McCarthy or Sir Sterling Moss, or they have some other affinity to mechanical and manufactured objects of an unusual nature. Or in some cases, they just have an affinity for the idea of the eco car parade here on the Mall. It was originally going to be a bit more of a challenge along the lines of the original race on Kilver Viaduct, but the Tag Heuer timing equipment had to be put away when it became clear that closing the road does not cancel out the speed limit especially not in one of London's royal parks. Some of the vehicles were better suited to parade pace anyway. But others, like Westfield's iRacer, have been designed for speed, in this case specifically for racing, and will form part of the grid in next year's EV Cup. Most of the cars were powered by electricity, and you can buy a Tesla today or a Mitsubishi IMI EV, and Renault's Fluence isn't far away from your showroom. GM had its hydrogen fuel cell technology on show, all real, sustainable and practical. Without a doubt, you're looking at the spearhead of what is going to be a very quiet revolution.